This episode has been sponsored by NordVPN. Get a great deal at the links down below. Welcome back. We're in Montana still, and we've got a cool video for you. What's the plan? We are gonna try and make something from our hammer eye plugs. So when I make hammers, we use our hydraulic press to punch the hole for the hammer eye, and out comes these little plugs for each hammer. So naturally, over the last year, you have an enormous amount of these plugs. Just buckets of them. Actually, that's all I've collected over like one or two months. <laughs> Now, of course, there's no sense in wasting all of that perfectly good steel. So instead of sending it to the scrapyard and getting maybe one penny for it, we're gonna recycle it and turn it into canister Damascus. And what would be better than turning hammer eye plugs back into a hammer? We're gonna make ourselves an integral carpenter's framing hammer. Thank you for joining us. First step is we have to clean these bad boys because they are covered in forge scale. They're not gonna weld very well. So we've soaked a bunch in some special sauce. That magic sauce is gonna strip the scale off and hopefully leave it clean. And we will then assemble it into a can of steel with some powder. We've got 1084 powder. We've got pure nickel powder. And in order to hopefully get the contrast that we want from the 1045 hammer slugs, we're going to see if we can just go ahead and mix the nickel powder into the 1084 powder to give it a little extra shine. So here we're oxidizing some stainless steel foil. This will make sense soon. We're gonna cut some of this and make a can. So this stainless steel that we've oxidized, this is a trick that I believe I learned from Will, who I believe learned from Steve Schwarzer. This oxidized stainless steel won't stick to our powder or our hammer plugs, but without it, this box would. It's also very hot, ow. So we're gonna line the box with this so that this can come off without needing to be ground or milled away from the billet. It can just be peeled off because it won't be stuck. We're now gonna mix this stuff. We want 2% nickel, just like 15 and 20. I thought I'd have more than enough powder, but I've run out. We're gonna need like three and a half pounds of powder in this thing. Let's forge weld this beast. All right, it's now actually a new week. I had to leave the workshop early. Sam got a little bit more work done. I went and trialed crazy again. We got our PSA 1. It's incredibly exciting. She did great and proud as can be. And while I hit the road, Sam helped me out on this billet. What did you do? I took a hammer and a hot cut, and while the billet was hot, I chipped and kind of peeled away the outer portion. And it looks awesome. This is almost a sculpture in its own right, but this is what we're really after. That is a gorgeous block of steel that we are going to try and forge a framing hammer from. A framing hammer. We're gonna take a few more welding heats now to consolidate it on all six sides. So we'll do a good bit of that before we start trying to forge any serious shapes. <laughs> Holy crap! is a big problem. We have a crack! Right, we're gonna try and grind that crack out. Feeling fairly confident about how well it's stuck. We should be good. We're now gonna forge it out into some rectangle, and then we're gonna isolate out some material for the hammer shape.
Didn't take long. So you can visualize it. This is kind of how we're making it. This section here will be drawn out into this tang, and then we'll have the head and the claw up here. Now I started butchering it to isolate this material, but would you have a look, it's only gone and cracked. Just on the first couple hits, it's opened right up. I don't think there's a whole lot I can change right now though, so it's a crossing the fingers type of thing, and I hope that it doesn't fall apart completely. Right here is where we're at. We've got a nice long bit of tang length. We've still got a little bit of tweaking to do up here. We've got a chisel in our slot. But I'm going to take a break from working on it to take us on a little field trip to see the one, the only, the real live Will Stelter. Mr. Stelter and Isaiah. Are these the results of the last month of work? This was a month and a half of work. And this is 10 days of work. You've been busy. I've been busy. What are you getting ready for? Uh, I'm getting ready for Blade Show in Atlanta for testing for my journeyman test in the American Bladesmith Society. So we start off with a performance test where you forge a knife and you have to chop some free hanging rope, one inch free hanging rope, and then a two by four and a half twice. And then you bend it 90 degrees without it breaking. I went and did that at Josh Smith's place. Uh, and after that happens, so long as your knife doesn't break, then you get to do five knives and submit them to a panel of Master Smith judges, and they either tell you that you're good enough to be a journeyman or you're too too bad. Try again next year, sort of thing. This was my knife, my performance knife. I softened my tang, and that bent to 90 degrees. This bent and to 90 back degrees. To there. The tang, since it was soft and a little bit thinner, bent and the pipe hit me in the face while I was bending it, uh, but it made a loud snapping noise as the scales popped off, and then it like flew out of my hands, and I thought the knife had broken in half. That must have been scary. It was horrifying. I wanna, I wanna see the finished knives, the Just, pretty ones. Show right. me the pretty ones. This is my backup knife, uh, and this is the paring knife, so the small knife in the chef's knife kind of set. These are all 1085 with African blackwood handles. This is the mm. hunting knife. That thing is awesome. I think my favorite out of all of them, and it is the big integral. Oh, isn't that cute? Gorgeous. This is the chef's knife. This was the second knife that I finished. Scrumptious. <laughs> this one is the big boy, the large Bowie. Shoot. I've got rust around my guard. Oh, oh no. Yeah, that's fixable. But it sucks. Golly. It is rather large. Gorgeous set of knives, Will. Thank you. I have a feeling you're going to be a journeyman next week. I hope so. This weekend. In, unless I can't fix the rust on this. Well, actually, that's why I have a backup knife. Because it's also possible for <laughs> the little room. ditty backup knife. Exactly. That big old thing. Oh, and then there's this guy also, which is not a journeyman knife. It's just a cute little paring knife that I finished up. Oh, that is gorgeous. So, you remember the knife. dinosaur knife that I made with Steve yeah. Scherzer? This was the supporting element that went around the dinosaurs, but, but I took the bar and twisted it. You have been busy indeed. How have you been able to do all of this? Hey, I want to see some machines. Uh, we have them. We have them. We can start outside. So this is power hammer number four. Number one is the broken power hammer over there. You guys oh. might remember that one. <laughs> Anyway, this is a 100 pound Beaudry mechanical forging hammer. It was built in 1918, and it's gonna be a very good uh, accompaniment to the other forging equipment inside the shop. Let's keep in mind, as we're looking at how messy the shop is, that I just made 
eight knives in 10 days. And I didn't clean up at all during that time. Machinist vice, but it's a heavy chipping vice, and so it's big enough that you can hammer on it, which is super nice. And then we have the big power hammer. You cannot understand the scale of this. I've seen this in videos and pictures. I could not grasp the scale. It is monstrous. So this is the big brother to the little hammer out there. This is a 400 pound ram. Uh, that one is rated at 50 pounds. Its actual ram weight is 94 pounds. I don't know what the actual ram weight is on this. Probably more than 400. And we have the little 25 pound little giant. I remember this guy. I remember this one, it was in Alex's shop for a good while. And then I have a 400 pound coal swaw anvil. A 25 ton coal ironworks press with a digital controller on it, which is just swell. Uh, and then a nice twisting machine that is a three horse motor with a one to 100 gear reduction. And so it's putting out 7,300 inch pounds of torque, 7,300 foot pounds of torque. We have one of the last hammers Alec ever made in the Barker Street Forge, his first shop. It sits right here next to a Jake Ferrum hammer, uh, an Alex Steelco hammer, the only hammer I've ever made, an Ethan Hardy hammer, another Jake Ferrum hammer. And a tape measure. And a tape measure. For, it's my forging tape measure. If you get it just right, it doesn't dent the steel too much. It's, it's quite nice. Uh, and then over here is the machining area. So I've got my Bridgeport mill, my 1941 American pacemaker lathe, which is a 14 by 30. It's a massive lathe. But it, it doesn't have a huge capacity. It just, half of it is headstock and the other half is bed length. Over here is the Dual 36.3. It was built in 1958. It's large. And then we've got my quenching oil here and then underneath this you can't really tell but there's a rhino cart which is a fabrication table. And then back here welder, heat treating oven. We've got the grinding room back here where I have my lovely Alex Steel Co. belt grinder. Thing is awesome. You like it? This, I really do. I really do. It's, it's quite good. Thank um, you. <laughs> I've got all my belts over here. Will, your workshop is awesome. It's a mess. This is what a workshop should look like. <laughs> messy, jam-packed to the brim. It's been getting used. Don't worry, it's not messy as an insult. It's messy as a compliment. <laughs> you have so much awesome stuff in here. What a cool workshop you put together. Right, I gotta head out, Will. Alrighty. Well, I will see you when I get back from Atlanta. Yes. Maybe a journeyman. Maybe really sad. Maybe a man that went on a journey. Maybe just a man that went on a journey. We're gonna make something next week, hopefully, unless, unless something goes bad. Good to see you, Isaiah. We gotta thank our sponsor. And that is NordVPN. It is a virtual private network, but it does oh so much more. With Nord's new threat protection, your cybersecurity is gonna be stepped up to the max. Once threat protection is on, it protects you from malicious sites, downloads, trackers, and intrusive ads. Threat protection is always on the lookout, even when you're not connected to a VPN. I use NordVPN every single day, and since I've been doing all of this insane traveling lately, all around Europe, all around America, in different motels, hotels, and Airbnbs, it's been incredibly reassuring to know that the internet service providers at all these different places don't have access to my data or the websites that I'm browsing. Further to that, since I'm traveling, I wouldn't be able to access normal UK streaming content while I'm here in the US, but with Nord, I can. In the handy dandy app for iOS, Mac, Android, and PC, you can easily switch servers and trick the websites that you browse into thinking you're browsing from whichever country you like. Also, check that 60-day protection streak. So start protecting and liberating your internet experience today by going to nordvpn.com forward slash forge where you'll get a huge discount off a two-year plan plus one additional month for free. Thank you guys so much for watching. Can't wait to finish this hammer. Can't wait to film a video with Will. See you soon. Bye-bye.